and I said they're congruent. Those sides are congruent. Hey, that's just not a right triangle. That's also a what now? Isosceles. Yeah, let's keep going with that isosceles fact. What do you know are across from those congruent sides? Yeah, congruent angles. How about you go find them for me right now? Go ahead, find those two missing angles. If you know it's a right triangle and the other two are congruent. And those two angles would be, let's start this off right. What do we say? Ones. Makai, what do you got back there? 45 each. Thank you. They're both 45 and 45. Good deal. Angle A, 45. Angle C, 45. All right, let's answer some more questions. AB. Well, that's pretty easy, right? I marked them congruent with the hash marks. So AB has to be two. Now, what about AC, the hypotenuse? What can you use to find the hypotenuse? Come on, we've been working hard all unit long. Where are you going to bust out to find AC now? We can use, I'm not looking for the answer. We can use what, Henry? Darn right we can. All right. I know two sides trying to find the third. So everyone go ahead. Two squared plus two squared equals my hypotenuse, C squared. Simplest radical form as usual. No decimals for me, please. Whoa, that was close. Bryson, what do we got for the hypotenuse length? Two. So all three sides are two? Yeah. How can the hypotenuse also be two? What are we doing in Pythagorean theorem? Two squared plus two squared, right? Yeah. So you got four plus four yeah. equals C squared. Add them together, you get eight, right? There you go, two radical two, thank you. So we got two radical two on the hypotenuse. Everyone good with those? You don't see it right now because we've only done one example. But after this second example on number two, hopefully now you'll see a pattern between the sides. All right, now I gave you both 45s. A and C are 45s, what's my missing angle? And here you go, missing angle, we'll go through that real quick. Missing angle, go to Cormac, missing angle. 90, thank you. That's got to be a 90 degree angle. All right, I didn't, did I need to put the congruent marks on there? No, you already knew BC and AB were congruent because they're across from the congruent angles, 45. So BC must be five. And then go ahead, find AC using Pythagorean theorem. Simplest radical form again. And that hypotenuse, when you get it, how long was that hypotenuse? Simplest radical form, Simon? Five radical two. Five radical two. Got it. <clears throat> All right. These two triangles both have 45, 45, 90. And this is the only time that this pattern exists is when the angles are 45, 45, and 90. And that's what I call these triangles. So go down to your conclusions right now. So in A... 45, 45, 90. And again, when I say 45, 45, 90, we're referring to the degree measures, degree measures of the triangle. In a 45, 45, 90 triangle, we see a pattern. We see a pattern. First thing we see, aren't two sides always congruent? Everyone see those in the example, two sides. Uh, I just don't want to say two sides congruent. Let's use our big boy, big girl vocabulary terms. What are those sides called again? Legs, there we go. So in a 45, 45, 90 triangle, the legs are congruent, right? There were two, two and five, five in each example. Talk about the third side, the hypotenuse. 
how do you, how quickly, I'm not talking Pythag, I'm talking like that. How can I find the hypotenuse in F45, 45, 90? The hypotenuse will always be equal to, now look at the hypotenuse in each example we did. In number one, it was two radical two. In number two, it was five radical two. How can I get the hypotenuse like that instead of having to go through Pythagorean theorem? Which isn't wrong, but I'd like to get there as quick as possible. What can I do to find the hypotenuse at any time? Bailey, in your own words, go ahead and then we'll put it up here. It's the measure of the legs with radical two. There you go. Take a leg, right? We took a leg and multiplied it by the square root of two, radical two. That's how you find the hypotenuse in every 45, 45, 90. Whatever the leg was, you multiply it by radical two and you get your hypotenuse. So we don't have to do Pythag anymore. And that's all we're gonna, this is where, we're, this is our lane today, 45, 45, 90. This is one of the special right triangles. The other one we'll do on Monday, but we're gonna stay in the 45, 45, 90 lane. All right, let's use some examples here. Quick day today. All right, find the missing sides for me. And everyone notices it's 45, 45, 90. I don't need to add in the right angle. We know it's a right angle. All right, so find the missing sides. All right, first side I want from somebody, what's BC in this 45, 45, 90 triangle? BC, the other leg? The other leg, Simon? Six. Six. All right, how about AC? I'd like you to use the rule instead of trying to use pi fact. All right, I'd like you to use the rule. Leg times radical two, right? Hypotenuse is equal to leg times radical two. So that gives me AC is going to be two zip, two zip, Brendan. Six radical two. I'm done. All right, if you need to use Pythag, still use it. It's part of this unit, so why not? Not going to take off for it. All right, next up, number two here. All right, BC, which is a leg, <laughs> is radical five. So how about AB now? Length of AB. Stephanie. Also radical five. Legs are congruent and a 45, 45, 90. Good. All right. Now, how about AC? Be careful here. Let me go through. Hypotenuse equals leg, right? Radical five times always radical two. And this is awesome this year. I'll be honest. This is awesome. Every year I'd have to review how to do radicals, but you can just type this sucker in your calculator now, and we're good. What do you got for me? Radical form, please. No decimals here, no decimals. Dylan, radical 10. Good. It's always leg times radical 2. That radical 2 never changes. All right, how about 3? I, I see it's a 45, 45, 90. One leg is 3 radical 2. All right, how about AB now? How about AB? Simon, on fire today. Let's go, boss. AB is three radical two. Three radical two. Good. All right, everyone ready for the hypotenuse now? AC, you take a leg, three radical two, leg times radical two. All right, leg times radical two. And type, type, type away. And that'll, let's see what I got there, All right? That'll be, whew, on fire again here. One, where are we going? Where are we going? I know it, I know it. Bryson, where are we going here? Um, six. Six, there we go. All right, everyone good there? Because I'm going to flip the script now on you. Change it up. Every single example we've done, you've known the leg. Given a leg, given a leg, given a leg. Now, number four, what did I give you? I caught noose and I want the leg back now. All right, so how do I go backwards now? Easy. Write the rule first for me. I was given the hypotenuse, and what we wrote in that conclusion box on the previous page said that's equal to leg times radical two. So all I did was write the rule. All I did was write the rule. Now substitute in. Eight radical two is your hypotenuse. Substitute it in. So hypotenuse, eight radical two, is equal to leg, what we're looking for. So throw an X, whatever variable floats your boat, times radical two. All right, so all I did was substitute in there. Now use your algebra skills. How do I get rid of the radical two to solve for X? 
It's being multiplied by X. How do I undo it? Divide both sides by radical two to get that out of there. Okay, so I got to use a little bit more algebra than I used on the previous couple problems. So that tells me each leg, because we know they're equal, I don't need to do this twice, A, B, and B, C. What do you got for me? Oh, Bryson again. Eight. Everyone all right with that? If you're given the hypotenuse first, you're not going to freak out. Just write the rule and substitute in. Write the rule, substitute in. All right, next one, number five. Again, given the, look what I was given, the hypotenuse, right? And find the legs. I'm going to keep doing this every time. Hypotenuse equals leg times radical two in a 45, 45, 90. Substitute in. Hypotenuse is six. And I'm looking for the leg X. And then how do I get rid of? The radical two, just like I did previous problem. Yeah, we're going to divide both sides by radical two. And please, again, leave it in radical form, no decimals. Oh, there's a new one there. I got that. Shara, go ahead. What do you got? Yes, good job, good job. Three radical two for your leg, which is B, C, and A, B. Everyone good? All right, let's apply it to something we know of something, something, something about. A square. All right, I'm going to go hands off here. I'm going to let you and your group to decide how to do this one. I'm going to tell you both diagonals are 10 because diagonals are congruent in a square. What's the perimeter of this thing? All right. Do you have to use 45, 45, 90? No, you don't. You could use something else we've used in this unit. Go ahead. I'm just going to let you guys go. Open, open season here. Open season. It's a square. It's got every property. Every property you think of, it's got. All right. We could use 45, 45, 90 triangles here, or we couldn't. There's other ways to go about it. Find the perimeter of this square. All right. You know, both diagonals are 10. Perimeter. Find a way to get there. Yeah. Knowing what you know about a square, find a way to get there. Everything applies. Everything applies. It's a square. Yeah, All right, let's talk. Uh, two ways. I think the two most popular ways you could have done this problem. 
first way is that you could have had it 45, 45, 90 work in this one if you decided to do that. Remember, that's a right angle. The diagonals bisect the angle, so they bisect the 45, the 90s, which become 45 there. And then if that diagonal is 10, that's the hypotenuse, right? So we know hypotenuse equals leg times radical 2. Divide both sides by radical 2 in your calculator. And you got one side to be 5 radical 2. And then perimeter we'll talk about in a second. But that's how you get a side using 45, 45, 90. I, will, I saw some of you didn't use 45, 45, 90. Fine. Instead, you said, hey, diagonals bisect each other. So each piece was 5 here. And the diagonals are perpendicular. So you could use Pythagorean theorem to find a side. Either way, you're still going to get 5 radical 2. For a side, though, right? For a side, we need to define the perimeter. So take your 5 radical 2, all sides congruent in a square, multiply it by 4. Hopefully, we got 20 radical 2 as our perimeter. Okay, 20 radical 2. Please go to number six on tonight's homework. I do not want you to fall into a common trap that happens every year. Okay, please go to number six. Do not fall in this trap. All right, it tells us some side lengths, right? It says BC is eight, CD is 10, and we are looking for the perimeter of triangle ACD, this whole one right here. Okay, perimeter of ACD. And you know that it also tells you ABDE, that's a square. So we know there's right angles there, right? Or at least right there. Big mistake, it's not true. I, don't, I understand where it comes from, but everyone sees a 45 here and they assume angle C is 45. Well, I don't know that's a right angle up here, so you can't assume that's 45. It's not 45. Everyone, go, it's not 45 degrees, all right? You can't say that because I don't know if that's a right angle or not, all right? So do not put that's 45. What you can put as 45 is, anybody see another angle I didn't label? That definitely is 45, though. Angle A, D, B, yes, that's definitely 45. But angle C, not 45, kids, not 45. Don't assume it is. All right, go ahead. All your time here.